What if I told you Sanskrit grammar is the easiest to understand? You might laugh it off, but it's true. It has only two types of words with three changes each. You might already know that Sanskrit language has hundreds of root sounds, thousands of grammatical rules, and millions of possible words. On top of it, they all seem to be arranged into dreadful looking tables. The stuff of nightmares for any Sanskrit student. But what if I told you that all of this has an extremely simple and an elegant source of origin and can be understood within the next few minutes? The Sanskrit channel is an effort to explore a vast variety of topics from original Sanskrit literature. If you wish to support this effort, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon or make a one time contribution through these options. Your support will help us improve the quality, length, and number of topics covered in our videos. Do check out all the links in the description below. Any Sanskrit word can be seen as a combination of three parts. There is a root sound or the dhatu which holds the essence or meaning of the word. There is a prefix called upasarga which modifies the meaning of the root sound. And there is a suffix or pratyaya which adds more context as to how the root sound should be used. Based on what kind of suffix is used, all Sanskrit words can be divided into two groups, all name related words and all action related words. For example, ram is a root sound which denotes pleasure or enjoyment. We can add suffixes to this root sound ram to make it sound like ramaha, ramanaha, rama or ramyam which are all name related words or we can add different suffixes to the same root sound ram and form words like ramanti, ramatam or ramaswa which are all action related words. Now, how do we decide what kind of a suffix to add? Simple, for name related words, suffixes are decided by the gender of the name, linga, number of such names, vachana, and the context in which the name is used, vibhakti. For action related words, it is the time context in which the action is performed, lakara, number of people who performed the action, vachana, and the person who performed the action, purusha. This is it. What you are looking at is the entire Sanskrit grammar in a nutshell. Let us now go one level deeper into the number of these possible suffixes. Among the suffixes for name related words, the gender or linga is of three kinds. There is masculine or punlinga, feminine or strilinga, and neuter or napunsakalinga. Vachana or number is of three kinds too. There is singular, ekavachana, dual, dvivachana, and plural or bahuvachana. Vibhakti or name context is usually of seven kinds. Among the suffixes for action related words, the time context or lakara is of 10 kinds, the vachana is again of 3 kinds, and the purusha, which denotes who did the action, is of 3 kinds first person or uttama purusha, second person or madhyama purusha, and third person or prathama purusha. If you look at it closely, this is the origin of all the tables that you see in Sanskrit grammar. You take the root sound ram and fix its gender as ramaha, the one who causes pleasantness. The other two parameters can be listed out with the number or vachana in rows and the context or vibhakti in columns. If you fix the gender as rama, you get a different kind of table. If you fix the gender as ramyam, you would get yet another kind of table. If we don't fix the gender of the root word like this, and wish to explore all possible forms of the root sound ram in a name related context, they would form a three dimensional matrix with the gender or linga as the length, number or vachana as the breadth, and the context or vibhakti as the depth. To make it simpler to write on paper, we fix one of the parameters, usually the gender for names and time context for actions, and draw two dimensional tables which are 7 by 3 for name related words and 3 by 3 for action related words. Now, if the same root sound ram is used as an action related word, 
we fix the time context of the word as ramayati to cause pleasantness. The other two parameters can be listed out with the number or vachana in rows and the person or purusha in columns. This is the background behind how the 7 by 3 and the 3 by 3 tables are constructed in Sanskrit grammar. Unfortunately, the current Sanskrit curriculum does not present this flow of thought to the students before expecting them to memorize these tables. Even if this background is presented, this is not the right topic to choose to begin learning a language. Anyways, I hope this video helped bring some clarity and understanding as to how systematic the organization of Sanskrit grammar is. As I said in the beginning, Sanskrit is the easiest, most intuitive and fun language to learn and relish if only presented in the right way. If you wish to support the production of more videos like these, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon or make a one-time contribution through these options. Your support will help us improve the quality, length and number of topics covered in our videos. Also, consider subscribing to the Sanskrit channel where we explore hidden gems in the vast world of diverse Sanskrit literature. See you in the next video. Namaskaram.